But I was on set as recently as last year doing a movie, and I was the only black face there. So when I get get to Atlanta, I feel like I'm home. So looking at these kids and their and their hope and their looking at me going, I can do it too. That mm-hmm. inspires me every day. Yes, indeed. Welcome to Expeditiously. This is your host, Tip T.I. Harris. Now, here what we do is we have discussions that push the culture, the community, and the generation forward. And we have those discussions with people, well, quite frankly, who are relevant to the discussion. My guest for today has an inspirational journey like no other, from the hard streets of New Orleans to the heights of Hollywood's A-list in the stuff uh, uh, that American legend is made of, all right? Born into poverty and raised in a household scarred by abuse, he fought from a young age to find strength, faith, and perseverance that would later form the foundations of his much acclaimed, uh, uh, highly anticipated, extremely lucrative plays, films, books, and shows, all right? Now, this brother would would, would become such an icon in our culture and has been such a beacon in our community that I truly could never say enough to describe his impact. Now, quite some time ago, uh, you probably saw pictures, videos, or even heard uh, whispers of the the, the, the culmination of black excellence that uh, came to Atlanta to celebrate the, the, the opening uh, of his of his film studio that is that that makes everything else pale into comparison. If there's any way we could give a standing ovation through audio, I think we would be remiss not to please everybody. Welcome, Mr. Tyler Perry. What's up? Man? What's, What's going up, on, bro? Thanks for having me, man. I appreciate it. Man, thank you for coming. No, oh, come on. Come on. You know what? Atlanta had to be here. You you dig what I'm saying? First yeah. of all, man, thank you for everything that you've done for the culture in the city. Thank you, man. You I know what I mean? It. And I, I, same to you. Same to you. Well, thank you, man. Yeah. I, th- I think a lot of people have heard about um, your your uh, acquisition and and the establishing of your film studio, Tyler Perry Studios in Atlanta. But I don't think they understand the real relevance. Can you please tell us what it was be- before it became Tyler Perry Studio? Well, yeah, at one point it was a Confederate Army base where, you know, there were soldiers and generals and, and captains and everybody plotting and planning on how to keep uh, black people enslaved. So yeah. that very land, that same land today, you know, thousands of cars are coming in to work every day. I, I right. have personally have 600 uh, employees that are working there on the, on my side of the studio that are, are mostly black and brown people. And Absolutely. in this land that they tried to make a terrible thing is nurturing us, man. Right. I'm loving it. And it's at the heart of our community, which makes me so happy and excited because it gives it gives an opportunity for kids to see that I did it and they can do it too. So, yeah, man, especially absolutely. our kids. Yeah. I think absolutely. And thank you for the invitation. And, you know, that I, I can't really describe how important it was to have all the people in yeah. that room. Yeah. At one time. I don't think it's ever been done. It was a crazy moment, man. It was a crazy moment. You know how this podcast can be better? How? Tell me. Tequila, man. You, gotta you have know some, what? Listen, man. That's what we tequila. usually do. You got to have hey, tequila listen, man, on the on, table. Bring, bring Where's Tyler, the tequila? Where's the tequila? Bring Tyler the libations. Oh, come on, man. Bring we're the libations to Tyler, man. I was trying to get my corporate on. <laughs> <laughs> corporate my ass, man. Come on. Where's the tequila? Come on. Let's go with it. Let's All go right. with it. So uh, now what we do here is have a conversation, man, that young men, women, uh, uh, and entrepreneurs can can use to move themselves forward in their journey. Yeah. Could you please tell me how you came up with your business your business model? So I went looking into into trying to figure out how do you own a show? What does that mean? And ownership was key for me because when I was a kid, man, my father uh, worked – for this, he built built houses. This white man that he loved, right? This white okay. man down the street built these houses for. And uh, he, come on in here. Uh, oh, yeah, that's the good on, stuff. Yeah, yeah. Introduce. There you go. There you go. Introduce Tyler to Tequila, man. Yeah, yeah. No, no. <laughs> no. I know. I know. Nineteen forty two. Well, you know. Okay. What I'm all right. All right. <laughs> there you are. I, I, I was about to get deep. You t- no, no, nah, nah, I'm man, good. I'm good on. I'm good on the ice. We're gonna take it neat. We're gonna take it neat today. Yeah. So you got to get some glasses in here, man. Man, come now, on. man, you know we don't want people to get too comfortable. Yeah. You know. <laughs> All right, no, no. You know here's what I'm saying. T- come on, sit down. Let's get on up out of here. Uh, cheers. 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 Man, cheers. To, to making success. it. To making it. Yeah. You know. Here's the thing. My um, my um, father worked building houses for this white man, as I was saying. And he would come home so happy because he had made eight hundred dollars. He made his money. He said, "I made this much money," and, I, and he had to pay his employees out of it because he had other subs under him. Right. And I always watched a man who built the house and owned it 
sell it for eighty thousand mm. dollars. So he got eighty. My father got eight hundred, and he mm. thought it was a wonderful thing. And I even remember being a kid trying to talk my mother and my father into uh, actually owning, their, buying the house and selling it. But you know, they came from a Jim Crow South. That kind of right. reality wasn't for them. They didn't get it. Right. So ownership was the key, man. Ownership. That's the thing that made me. That has changed everything in my life. I own. Every play, every movie, Uh. every character, Mm. every TV show, it's all owned by me. And that is what has set the difference of me being able to say, I'm going to set a path where I can open the door for everybody else. Absolutely. Or waiting for somebody to give me a job. Man, now now, now you touch on a key point when you say ownership, and you come from absolutely nothing. Yeah, You come from the bottom. And it's a lot of people listening who also would love to come from the bottom and and put their dreams into into effect to to yield the kind of results that you have. Uh, How do you start? Like Mm. ownership, because usually... We defer our ownership to someone for startup costs. Yeah. Mm. So how do you start? For me, I wasn't going to do that. Mm. I, I um, worked, went to H&R Black, H&R Block, did my taxes, saved my tax money, invested in my first play, put mm. it up. It didn't work out. I um, went on tour for every time I do the show, but there was always somebody who wanted to uh, audition uh, I'm a who, wait, damn, this tequila. Here. <laughs> hold, hold on, I'm going to have to, something else in this 1942. I'm going to have to slow down a minute. Wait a minute. Let me concentrate for a second. Give me some water. Y'all bring me some water. <laughs> so so you say. Uh, I said audition. No, no, what I said. So I have my, <laughs> tip, tip, shit. all right. So I had my, um, my tax money and I put it into my first play. And outside of that, there was somebody who, you know, only 30 people showed up, but there was somebody who wanted to invest in it. And that person did one play that didn't work out. Then another person came along. They wanted to invest. You know how these shady people Yeah, yeah absolutely. So, absolutely. They, so for years we were doing that, but, but I wouldn't give up any control. Even right. when I got to Hollywood, but I had been successful with plays. But at that time I had made $75 million doing live shows. I got Ooh. to Hollywood and nobody knew who I was. Right. But I, 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 I cultivated us. Mm. I worked with us, right. you know. I nurtured us as an audience. They took care of me. I took care of them. I gave them the best I had. They gave me the best that they could. So right. it's like we always get a degree or something, and we run from the culture. That's right. We don't want to live around us. We don't want to work around us. That's right. Our culture is rich, man, and every other race comes in and rapes and mines everything we have and take it out, but they don't leave anything for us. They so don't cultivate. We, exactly right. So when we can take our own culture and and have it be – Here's what I'll say about that. Like, um, segregation was a horrible thing. Right. Horrible thing. Yeah. When it ended, a lot of black businesses ended. Okay. Because under black business, businesses did so much better under segregation because we were forced to buy from each other. That's right. When that ended, we just went in all different directions and we're buying from everybody but us. Hence the, uh, uh, the sentiment behind... Uh, the late great uh, uh, Martin Luther King, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s statement, I believe I've integrated my people into a burning building. Mm, mm. Uh, That was one of his last quotes before his assassination. Mm. Uh, I believe that he saw that the very inclusion or integration that he was fighting for turned around to bite the community in the ass, just like you're suggesting. Yeah, but it's a, listen, it's a beautiful thing. I love that I can go anywhere. My, my sure. son can go to any school. I, I love that. Sure. But but uh, what I'm hoping that we've remembered inside of it that we can go anywhere else, why not go back to us? Mm. Now, that lays some burden at our feet, too, to be completely honest. We got to step up our game. That's in, right. In professionalism, in, in how we honor the customers and how we honor the people that are holding us up. So that is what is important. And once we can do that and, and get our own people to realize, because I, I know, listen, I know black people that say, I ain't going over there to deal with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, but I ain't buying nothing for anything. You got security issues, yeah. you got customer service issues. Yeah, exactly right. So You know, you got manufacturing distribution. Time, yeah, exactly. Time. A- absolutely. You, you're supposed to open at 9, you're not there at 1130 because you <laughs> feel like getting up. I mean, come on. So, so once we learn to really um, be professional and a forthright and just downright organized with everything, mm-hmm. I think that a lot of us will start to support us. And that's what happened with me, man. My right. audience is die hard loyal. Man, I'm talking about like, I mean, and they have been ever yep. since you were doing live shows. Yep. What made you go into like plays? What indication did you have that stage plays were, why not straight to movies? 
I, I never felt like anybody would take me seriously in the movies. I didn't know enough about it. I need to learn. Okay. And uh, I, I've, I've been going to plays for years. I didn't have the money to go. Uh, there's the Sanger Theater down in New Orleans. I didn't have the money to actually go to the entire show. So mm-hmm. I was tipping in an intermission when everybody come out to smoke. Right. I, sneak, <laughs> I sneak in and see the rest of the play. And I go, wow. Then I'm like, man, I could do better than this. You know, back in the day, they had the Mama, 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 I'm Mama. Mama, I want to sing. No, no, that was a good one. I'm talking yeah. about Mama on the couch with Mama's cousin next door neighbor eating chitlins play, you know. Yeah. I wanted to, to elevate it. I didn't want to elevate it so much that, that it left us and became something that we don't watch, like Broadway. A lot of, a lot of my audience is not. Can't relate. Broadway. It doesn't Can't represent relate. us. Right. But I wanted to elevate it from where it was. You know, there were two pieces of plywood and a sofa on the on the stage, and that was the set. You mm-hmm. know, and the sound system seemed like you got, they got it from Grandma's house. <laughs> so I had to upgrade that. And when I did that, man, there was a lot of appreciation for it, and they were right there with me. Man, I can remember hearing about, you know, Tyler Perry plays. Before I knew who you were, like, I, I think we kind of— Dude, you were two. Man, now, nah, man. I mean, what, 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 you you started like what ninety six, ninety two, ninety three, ninety two. Okay, I'm twelve and thirteen. Yeah, oh, I didn't wow, hear about okay. it maybe till like ninety seven, yeah, ninety eight. Yeah. You probably had your wheels rolling good rolling by it. then. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, but I, I I I would hear about it and. I would just see, like, you know, right going about my evening, riding past, say, the Fox or the mm-hmm. Civic Center, mm-hmm. lines wrapped around the corner. Crazy. You know what I mean? And I, I always wondered how could it get to this point without me having some familiarity with it? Yeah. Like, what were the underground, behind-the-scenes moves that you made to create, like, relevance for church, yourself? Church men and black women. Okay, uh, man. Black women uh, like like Maze right now. Maze hadn't done an album since nineteen eleven. Right on. <laughs> but, but, <laughs> but but they can they can sell out a building of an arena right now because of that loyalty. Real. And these these women that I went to church with that I grew up with, you know, I was I was speaking a language that they understood because of my mother and my sisters growing mm-hmm. up their hip, watching their pain and all the hell, hell that they went through. Mm. So that they endeared to me, man. I was cousin, uncle, brother, you know, yeah. and and they have been my sole support the whole time. And you've been speaking for them, like you know. Uh, through your characters and through the the the, the arcs of your characters, the yeah. stories that you're telling speak to the plight of black women specifically. Uh, but if I may ask, how did you come up with the idea for Medea? I, I was watching Eddie Murphy do the clumps. Okay. And I thought, whoa, let me try my hand at, at a female character. Mm. And um, and I had just done my old man character in, the, in my first play, and it had done really well. Okay. So I said, okay, I'm going to try a female character. I was only going to do it one show in Chicago, the Regal Theater, 79th Stony Island. I was scared to death the first time I do it. I, <laughs> I didn't rehearse with the costume. I never put the costume on. Right. It was me, Brown, and Cora. We all on stage. They're like, you're not going to put the costume on? I'm like, no. Day of the show, I put it on. Man, I was so crazy uncomfortable. Man. But um, – but the audience loved it. Yeah, it went. I was just like, really? You just kind of channel. Was it? Is it your mom? Your that, grandma? That's, that's totally my. I got an aunt in Texas named Mayola Ciparan. That's a real name. And Mayola Ciparan. Mayola Ciparan. Mayola Ciparan. Mayola Ciparan. And she talked like that. And she wear that wig. It's always crooked. And she always smoking. <laughs> and that's, that's her, man. That's her. Funny, funny as can be. Now, now, uh, at, at your meteoric rise, man, to success. Uh, has not come without some level of criticism. Some? Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You go, you're being polite. <laughs> I mean, man, you know, we brothers here, man. You know what yeah. I'm saying? But, I mean, but you have people like, you know, say Dave Chappelle uh, being one, and, you know, just other people in Hollywood and in, in, in the industry that say it is much easier especially for a black man to become successful when he chooses to put on a dress. Mm. How would you address that? I... Listen, Chappelle is one of the most brilliant people I have ever seen in my life, man. And right just, on. just not just in comedy, but the man is smart, a heavy, right brilliant thinker. So if that is the case in Hollywood, then okay, that's the case. But you got to understand, that's not my case, right? Uh, I didn't, I didn't, I, nobody owned that dress, right? But me, that's right. Nobody told me it's a two billion dollar franchise. Uh, nobody told me to put it on. That's right. Nobody makes me put it on. Okay. Nope. That was all on stage. Black man owned the whole show. Right. It was my choice, right? So when I got to Hollywood and and wanted to do uh, Diary of a Mad Black Woman. Um, 
it was my choice. That's right. And 19 movies since then, it's been my <laughs> choice. So, so I don't, I don't. Maybe that's the, maybe that's the way it's been for some other men who have had done that. But for me, let me tell you how I look at this, man. I'm not a man that enjoys wearing a dress. Uh, for me, as an actor, mm-hmm. it's costume. That's right. It's like if somebody goes to Walmart to work, they put on their uniform. For me, that's putting on a uniform, going out, making people laugh, okay. lifting them up, encouraging them, and and the the good that it does for so many people. My favorite moment in the show, and I just finished the last show in uh, Augusta. Medea's still alive. Yeah, she is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but my favorite moment is the last thirty minutes of every play. That's when I'm sitting there. That's the only time I don't feel foolish or ridiculous because uh-huh. I get to sit on stage in front of thousands of people in arenas now. Man, plays in arenas. That's a damn sh- day, man. Yeah, that's, sitting there, and I, I get can't. To sp- I can't believe it. I'm telling you, man. Spit wisdoms that speak to people's lives in a way that that makes it all right for me. So, so s- some people may not like the way that the uh, message got there, but it, for me, it's important that the message landed and helped somebody. I agree with you in totality. I don't think people even have a problem with, say, you know, you or whoever may choose to do a a character. Uh, of a woman as a male. I believe it's being suggested that there is an agenda to emasculate the black man Mm. to a certain degree, and that is what is kind of put out there in sort of a a, a propaganda kind of way. Now, what you're saying is, even if that is the rule, Tyler Perry is the exception. Well, well, listen. If people feel like that, I, I can't help people's thinking. I can't help what they what they feel or how, how they come to the conclusions right. of, of that. But again, for me and what I what I what I'm doing is I'm acting. That's right. Period. That's right. You know, when I just played Colin Powell, I'm not Colin. I was acting. You know, I got <laughs> and on the Alex wicked. Cross, by the way, and Alex Cross, which I'm is not, one of my favorite books. Thank you, brother. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not James Patterson's Alex Cross, but I'm an actor. Right. So, and I think that it's unfair to have an actor not be able to portray anything he wants to or right. she wants to as a character mm-hmm. because of someone's opinion. So I'm just gonna do me. Could you please uh, talk to the generation, the listeners of Expeditiously, about the sacrifice? of accepting the bag right now yeah. versus having equity in your art in yeah. perpetuity. This, uh, here's what a lot of people don't know. The budgets for my shows are really, really low. Okay. And the reason that they're so low is because being a black show, being a black writer, I get they do models for me. Mm-hmm. Even my movies, my budgets are really low. Mm-hmm. I, I see white boys walk in and they get four or five times as much as and make nowhere near. Right. Being black... I had to go into these rooms and try to figure out, okay, how do I make this work for me? So I was like, okay, I, I own the studio, I own the lights, I own the sound, I own all this stuff. So here's what I'll do. I'll go in, I'll take that lower budget, and I'll make it work. And my audience is going to show up, and they're going to make it work, and they're going to make it a hit. Right. And every every few years, we're going to try to negotiate to get that number higher. Mm-hmm. But in that, I'm doing all the sacrificing. Mm-hmm. I'm making sure everybody else is paid and getting what they want. But my sacrifice comes on the end because it's part of my catalog. Okay. So that's where my value is. It's not I'm not making the money up front. It's in the long game, right? right. So if you go in there and you're looking for the bag, then great. You go buy your Bentley, your Rolls Royce, great. That's all. It's over with. That's wonderful. You had, it, but but then what you've done is signed it all away. Right. They own you, and they're never going to give you an opportunity to be in that position again. I think a lot of people need to hear that. I believe a lot of people need to hear that. Do you do you know or remember what it was that made the shift in your head to go from stage play to feature film? Yeah, it was the it was the people loving the stories that I was telling and not having enough seats in the theater. We were selling, man, I was exhausted. I was doing over 360 performances a year. What? I kid you not, man. Exa- my work ethic is off the Richter, man. I work uh. my ass off. So I'm on tour doing these shows. And I'm like, I got to find a way to get to more people. So I think, okay, let's try film. Mm. Go to Hollywood. They're like, well, who are you? What do you do? I mean, I'm famous with black people. I can't walk down the street in the South without being like, my dear Tyler, right? Uh Get to Hollywood. They're like, well, I don't know, Tyler. And why does she say, give me some sugar on this page? Well, sugar, why does she want to change it? Well, that's how black people talk, man. You know, so in in, uh, understanding all of that, it's just, 
Uh, how much of a translation did you have to do? Because I imagine there's an incredible amount of translation, especially when you turn your film in. Yeah. And I'm sure there are comments that come from executives like, well, I don't know about this part. And why does this nope. have to be in there? Nope. You have full control yep. uh, I creatively. Went to, I went to uh, Fox Searchlight was the first place. And they gave me all those notes about changing things. I said, I'm not changing anything. This is the way it's going to be. Or we're not, I'm not doing it. Right. They were like, who the hell do you think you are? <laughs> but but I didn't. They didn't know I had an army behind me, man. I had all these people watching my shows, ready to bo- show bo- up, bootlegging it all over the place. Right. So I um, then I you know this agent Charles King's marching me all around. Charles all King the, is yeah. a, another king in the business. Great agent, man. You know, Tra- Charles was king. now he's doing his own thing in macro. Absolutely. Trying to get to, trying to get all these different conversations going. I'm like, I'm out of here. Forget this, man. I, I don't need this headache. Right. So I go to Atlanta, and I get a call from Lionsgate. And they say, um, well, we want to do the movie with you. I'm like, okay, great. Then I don't want any notes. I'm going to do it my way. It's going to be better than that. And he was like, okay. And this is Phil Hammer at Lionsgate? No, no, no. This is, uh, this is um, Pasternak, Mike Pasternak. Okay, Pasternak. So I had a great conversation with Mike, man. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I was shocked that he said, okay. Okay. Put the movie. They looked at the movie. They, I shot it. They saw it. They were like, eh, we don't know. I had a conversation with Felt right. my first time meeting him. And he's like, you know, I said, how, how much do you want the movie to do? He said, well, if it does $20 million, then great. I said, okay, $20 million the first weekend. He laughed at me at the table. <laughs> now, laughed, no, these kind of movies don't do those numbers. I got, went online, talked to my – because I had built a fan base before Twitter, Instagram, all this other stuff. I had my online email. Emailed them directly, told them what was going on. They went out there, man, and set that thing up well up over $20 million the first weekend. Mm. Yeah. And after that, how were you dealt with in the building? Did they say, okay, well, we clearly see this gentleman knows what he's doing. No. Is it, did you I have thought, some? No, thought it was a fluke. Uh, and that's why I tell people, stop fighting to let make people understand who you are. Right. Stop fighting. Say, I did this, and I stopped giving your damn resume. Shut your damn mouth for a minute. <laughs> I'll tell you why. Because you can make the best deals when you're underestimated. That's real. Don't go in there telling them how great you are and all the things you do. Just like, well, how, how about we do this? Just say you got to deal with somebody that's um, – a, a, a big industry thing, and, you, and they don't uh, they don't uh, know what to do with you. They okay. only want to pay you a little amount of money. Got you. Okay, I'll do that. I'll take that little amount of money. But let me ask you this: If I get this many people to show up, right. then you give me this more money, this more of a, of an amount, right? Which is so important that we learn how uh, to. That's called a back end bonus, isn't it? No, but not not even that. I'm, I'm talking about real. Okay. Real, real back end because a lot of times they play Equity. games with it. Yeah, yeah. Equity percentages in perpetuity. Exactly right. Okay. So just having us understand that we're at a disadvantage because we're black and this is not our town. Right. We've got to come in and understand how they play the game. Sure. And realize that we can get in and get to what we want to get to mm-hmm. by not selling out, not doing anything crazy, but by understanding. Mm. How they play the game. It's fascinating to me. I'm mm. from New Orleans, man. Just, you know, third water New Orleans. When I got here and I saw how these white folks operate, I was like, wow. It's crazy, huh? Man. It's crazy. And coming from where we come from, you're like, nah, nah get your mutton back, back. You know, you just want to be over, over with it, right? Yeah. Like, I, I, that's the fake, get that. But no, hope, just yeah. step back and pay attention. Yeah. yeah. Someone outside of the culture trying to tell someone within the culture what's authentic to the culture is one of the most ostracizing things I, I, I've, I've witnessed. Yep. You know, I think that it's... It really insults one's yep. intelligence. Yep. You know what I mean? Yep. That's just like me walking into a mechanic shop and telling my mechanic how, how to fix this Bentley. When you don't know. When I have no idea. I've never done it before in my life. Right. You know what right. I mean? I've never even seen anyone do it. Exactly right. You know, the most I've done yeah. is pay for someone else to do it for right. me. Uh, and you, I think, you ain't never looked under the hood. At all. Right, exactly right. I have no interest. <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> no, I have absolutely no interest you want or the desire. Engine? No, no. no just have to get me where I need yeah, to go. Like, warranty. Yeah. Warranty. Yeah, exactly right. right. And fix it. That's and right. get me a loner in the meantime. That's right. That's you right. know what I mean? That's right. Uh, and I think that's something that we have to, like like you said, you have to get, you, you change the game from the inside. Yeah. Uh, and I think a good book to suggest for people to read is The Spook That Sat By The Door. Mm. Yep. You know what I mean? Yep. That's yep. a good book. I, 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 I can't recall the actual author, but The Spook That Sat By The Door is a good one. And From Superman to Man, mm. that's also a good one. And mm. it, it, it basically, these are fictional stories that kind of detail the approach that you just that mm-hmm. you just spoke of, uh, and I think people can you know people can relate to it and they can use it on their journey. Let me ask you, what was like the hardest part, or should I say, which is harder, mm-hmm. stage, like putting a play together from top to bottom mm-hmm. and having it be successful, 
over the course of a tour or a film, putting a film together from top to bottom? I I, I, I like the stage. They're both about the same for me, man. My brain has to work in all those different areas. But mm-hmm. I love the stage because it's, it's an immediate give and take. The mm-hmm. audience tells you what they like right away. They tell you what they don't. Uh, the film is like having a baby, right? Mm. And you put the baby out, and you think you you got a cute kid, and everybody's talking about <laughs> how, how ugly your baby is, right? That's why I look at it for these critics. But you love your baby anyway. That's right. right. But what what I love about my audience, man, is that no matter how many critics, I always got receipts, and I'm always winning because of them. That's real. Yeah. Tell us who inspires you, or should I say, what inspires you? You know, at this point, I, I honest, honest to God, man, going into those gates every day, looking at these 20, 25, 30-year-old kids, 18, mm. 19-year-old coming to work there with this hope of these black kids who just nobody ever gave them a chance. Right. They never would have had a chance in Hollywood. I was on set as recently as last year doing a movie, and I was the only black face there. So when I get, get to Atlanta, I feel like I'm home. So looking at these kids and their, and their hope and they're, they're looking at me going, I can do it too, that mm-hmm. inspires me every day. Because, listen, I would have cashed in and took the bag a long time ago and went home. <laughs> I, I, I could be doing really good right now without You're paying 600 people. Selling, selling the French Riviera. Yeah, yeah, exactly you right. Exactly saying? right. On my own, yeah. Yeah, you yeah. dig what I'm saying? Yeah. Three stories on Yeah, exactly right. Hey, yeah. so, I mean, uh, you've, you've had so many of our icons as influences in, 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 in your career. Like you say, Sidney Poitnier. Uh, Diane Carroll, Cicely Tyson. Yeah. How have these connections shaped you as a man and an artist? I asked uh, S- Sidney Portia and Cicely Tyson to fly with me to Africa one year. And I literally, man, on the plane, sat at their feet listening to them talk about their journey and their life and what they had been through. And I felt like so overwhelmed by by just having this experience. Right. C- Cicely said something that, that blew my mind when she started talking about my uh, the generation after mine. She said, I don't think we left them enough to fight for. Mm. Which I thought was, wow. I don't think we left them enough to fight for. So thinking about all these people who went ahead and carved and fought and did all of this for us, and we don't even have the decency of the, uh, to take a moment and say thank you. you mm-hmm. know? So they really inspired me just by the Mr. P, man, Mr. Portier, his class. Right. He let me know it was okay to have class, you know? It's just amazing, man. It's man. amazing. You recently just got, I mean, I, I, I can I can, I can, can definitely uh, uh, concur with that. I mean, I think that every How time. How much longer? Because I want to take this down. Man, go and take it down. We no, got, like, you going to have me on minutes. camera like we this. We got maybe 15, 20 minutes, 20 minutes man. Okay. We got 15, 20 minutes. I got to pace myself with this shot. Man, you good. And, and it's a moment, man. I'm mm. going to have me a little moment. man. I'm yeah, you go ahead. You go ahead. I'm, I'm, <laughs> cause I, listen, I'll be up here just crying in a minute. Well, Tip, you don't even understand how hard it's going to be. And it's okay. And it's okay, man. Uh I mean, one of the coolest things I saw, man, you know, uh, was you get your uh, 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 your own star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Yeah, that was real cool. Like I was inspired. I was, you know. But then, okay, a cooler thing mm. that I saw uh, when 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 I was uh, awarded, I would say, an invitation, Who which was it? an illustrious invitation. Now, you know, what I'm saying did the, the, the invite. Now you got small budgets on your movies, <laughs> but the budget for this party had to be through the roof because yeah, the invitations yeah. were. Impeccable. Yeah, no, the party was a movie. I, I could have I I paid for a movie for that party. But I had to do it right, man. I had Absolutely. To do it right. And yeah. you did. Yeah. But when I got there, seeing that, uh, you had made your own Walk of Fame yeah. at Tyler Perry Studios, yeah. naming buildings after our icons right. celebrating their success. Right. That must have, I mean, it was, it was like just phenomenal for me to see. Yeah. So to be able to actually do that must have been incredible. No, it's really, really incredible, man, because I'll, I'll get a meeting that was like, yeah, meet me at the so-and-so building on this studio lot. And I'm going, okay, well, when are we going to meet at the yeah. black people building? Yeah. When, when can I meet you at the Denzel Washington Street? So I wanted to honor them, pe- those people, man, and, and uh, Whoopi and, and Will and Cecily and Hallie and, and Denzel and just you know, Diane Carroll, who died the day before. Damn. The day before the party. You know, and Ruby D and Ossie Davis and John mm, Singleton, absolutely, and just all of these people who who who, who and Ti, and the Ti Theater, hey, all man. these people who laid it down for us, man. They, sure, they, and and nope, and never got the respect that they deserve it that's due to them in this town. Man, I, I I commend you, I salute you, I appreciate you for all that you've done in, in, on behalf of the culture. Um, I mean, these things that that are you not. 
You must be protected at all costs and all regards. <laughs> you dig what I'm saying, man? You sound like Taraja. She said yeah, the same hey, man, thing. We yeah. got to, hey, listen, man. We're going to have to. Uh, all the bloods and the crips and all you, you know what I'm saying? Nation of Islam, yeah, man. We yeah. got to surround this brother and become a shield because he is doing exactly what, what, what needs to be done yeah. to get us not just a seat at the table, but to have our own table. Yeah, that's right. I think that's incredibly important. Um, now, I just got to know, is Medea really dead? That's it, man. I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. I'm done. I, you know, people are like, she can't be, she can't be. And, and this last tour was the most successful tour I've ever, I, I've ever had. I right. Was, uh, I, you know, I just, I mean, arena after arena after arena just packed. I was like, wow, what is going on? I'm thinking after 18, 19 years of this, people would be tired of it, but you know, they still want around, but but I, I'm 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 pretty I'm pretty settled with it being done. Man, one of my favorites that you've done was uh, Daddy's Little Girl, mm-hmm. starring Idris. Man, and one time for my partner. Uh, now, what made you want to do movie a movie about a father? Because most of your material yeah. is directly shaped towards the voice of a woman right. and the well, plight of a woman. Right, because my audience is largely women. Right? Mm-hmm. So so my focus in why I'm writing is 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 woman. It's like somebody who. Um, is is selling um, uh, pantyhose back in the day, right? Okay. You're not going to try to target men because your audience is women, right? right? So that's that's why my focus has been women, and because of my mother and all the things she went through, and my mm. sisters. And if I could if I could be a voice, and somebody could see a movie, and their mothers are laughing and smiling, and I, they don't have to uh, think about or be the little boy that I was looking up at my mother when she was going through all that hell. That's what was important to me. Mm. Yeah, but no, Daddy's Little Girls is a um, was one of my favorites. It is. Yeah, but but you know, just t- telling that story, I I. I if to 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 write for a woman's point of view, to to think about a woman, you have to come from emotion, and and uh, when I'm writing, that's what I'm thinking about the emotion. Sure. And emotions are so much richer with women. Right on. Right. And it's this harder. It's harder for to write a man for me because the emotions are much different. If that makes sense. Yeah. It's a yeah. lot. It, it's it's internalized. Yeah. So much is internalized. It's right. hard to sh- it's hard to say what to show. That's why Denzel is such a brilliant actor, man, because he's carrying it. He, you see him carrying the, mm. that internally every time he does something. So it's, you know. Yeah, I think but most I'm, men that act with their eyes and facial yeah. expressions, yeah. you know what I mean? Right. You kind of have to show what they're thinking right. at the time, uh, even if there are no words being spoken. Exactly right. Um, but I'm going to do everything, man. I'm, I'm, I, you know, when this, what I, I, don't, I don't set out to write a story. Right. I'll just, like, fall from grace. I didn't set out to write that story. Man, I I was, that was my next thing, because yeah. cause as much as... As as uh, dads and men were yeah. represented in Dad's Little Girl, Fall from Grace made n- niggas looked horrible. <laughs> I'm talking about damn. No, no. Now listen, no. bro. I like man. Who who? I don't want no no other men around. None of my mamas. No, no. Hold on. Hold none on. of my sisters. Hold on, none man. Of my, I'm just this, saying. But here's the thing, though. I always think that why did why is everything an indictment on us? Like that's why, true. White people can tell any kind of story. This they is want true. To. This but is but true. But the minute we tell a story, it's like the minute we tell a story about and there's a person that's bad. It's like oh, you're trying to make every black person bad. No. I don't think you were trying to make no. it. I'm just telling the yeah. particular story that was told. Yeah, it yeah. was told so yeah. well mm. that it left. And as a black man, I'm like, damn, is niggas that bad? Is niggas really that bad? There are some of them that are, man. There's some of them that are. Just like but guess what? It's a white folk that's, 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 that's just the same. So, and yeah, I can absolutely. take that. Absolutely right. Now, now you told me about uh, a new project you have coming out with, with Nickelodeon. Yes, I'm doing a show Young called Dylan. Young Dylan. Yeah, okay. Young Dylan for kids. It's uh, This kid is adopted by his aunt and uncle. And it kind of sounds familiar, but uh, <laughs> but uh, he uh, it's a it's a young show. I got a five year old, so I want okay. him to be able to see some of my stuff and, and and enjoy it. So I'm pretty excited about that. Right on, man. And I mean, I can't wait to see it, man. Um, and there's also you did a, a, a huge deal, the biggest content deal ever done uh-huh. at Viacom. Yeah. You did with BET. Yeah. Can you please well, tell the people about that? Yeah, with all, well with all of Viacom. So I um I have 
Yeah, it's a huge deal with BET. So you did a deal with Viacom, and BET is like it's a part, part of it. Yeah, gotcha. So, so I can program any of that. And Nickelodeon's also Viacom. Gotcha. So I can program any of those networks. And it was great working with uh, the Oprah Network, but it was only one channel. Mm. And I, my capacity to put out is so much, uh, I have so much. You have a lot of value. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and, that's why it's been great. Now, did you see this when you did your deal with TBS? Because you had a deal with TBS yeah. where you did the, not many people know of the arc of the, the 10, 100 episodes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, 10, 90, 100 episode. Yeah. So, and, and not many people are successful at that. Yeah. Because people got opportunity to do it and then didn't make it past five episodes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? So did you see this play then? I, I, I'm always looking for the next moment. But when I did that, I, I, I remember um, having a deal with CBS, and I wanted that deal to go to fall apart so bad. <laughs> and agents had talked me into it. I didn't feel good about it. It fell apart. It was going to be between a Tyler Perry show and Two and a Half Men. Gotcha. So they went with Two and a Half Men. And I went to Atlanta, and I said, I'm going to go down there, and I'm going to shoot 10 episodes of a show. And my agents, everybody was like, are you kidding? Don't do that. Why would you do it? Right. Well, I shot him, put him in a can. Nobody wanted him. Um, C- 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 CW and UPN merged? Mm-hmm. Or was it was it uh, something? The two of them merged or whatever. I could I could really remember that if it wasn't for this tequila. Well, hey, man, but, um, listen, man. But, we, we, but, we enjoying ourselves. Yeah, that's that's right. how it matters. But um, once they did that, I had these 10 episodes. And there was affiliates without programming. So they started calling around Hollywood, hang, what do you have? What do you have? What do you have? And my agent said, well, no, I've got this 10 uh, episodes of the show. They put it on. It was higher than the shows that were there. The and this was House of Pain? This, this was House of Pain, Okay, yeah. gotcha. So they're like, Tyler, this person wants to order 16 episodes. We never heard of that. This mm. person, I was like, no, I want 100. I mm. knew that 100 meant syndication. I said, right. I need 90. Right. And if you don't bring me 90, I'm not doing it. That's real. And TBS called... Uh, Steve Coonan over there said, "We'll order it. We'll take the we'll take the order, man." And and listen, USA Today did this horrible article. <laughs> this is oh, the worst thing I've ever seen. It's awful. It'll never. Did work. you frame it? it uh, I wish I could. I'm gonna go back and find it. it was, <laughs> it's, it'll never work. We are approaching 300 episodes of that show, man. And that's and that's phenomenal. And yep. with the, and, and, and in addition to that, the other things that you have, the new programming you have, the Oval, uh, the number Oval. one show on BET. Okay, Sisters number one on BET. Uh-huh. Uh, the haves and have nots, number one on all. Come on, talk yeah. that shit, Tom. No, no, it's the truth, man. <laughs> it's the truth. That's why when people are talking to something, I'm like, yeah, y'all go ahead. I'm, yeah. I'm just going to put up the I'm going to listen to the money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to listen to the money, man. Y'all keep on talking. I can't uh, hear you over this money. Just stop it. <laughs> yeah, I'm, just, I'm just, yo, yeah, y'all go ahead and have that. But but there's so much. The success, success is tremendous, man. And, and everything I've done so far has just been through the roof. Man, I will ask you what's next, but I'm scared. I'm scared to ask you, you, you know man, what I'm doing. What's next? You know what I'm doing? I'm I'm uh, taking some of the land in Atlanta and I'm building a shelter for battered women, LGBTQ youth, okay. and um trafficked girls and boys. Okay. That's that's what's next. That's that's the next thing I want to do. Man, I actually have an initiative where I'm working with uh I'm working with the governor on on trying to, you know, limit or at least just combat the the abundance of human trafficking for our, our, our women and children yeah. coming through Atlanta. When I found out it was a hub, me being a father of daughters yeah. and just, yeah. you know, a lover of my community yeah. myself, I felt compelled. Let's get together, man. And it was something that, you know, the governor reached out to me on yeah. after seeing a video that I had shot. Mm-hmm. And I, um, you know, the governor and I, we hadn't seen eye to eye on a lot of things. Yeah. So for him to reach out, yeah. You know, says, okay, look, whatever we disagree about, yeah. we could put that to the side. Come together on something that we can agree on and get something done. I wish most more of us would get that, man. If more right. of us would get that, be like, hell no, I'm not, you know, I'm not talking. To, no, man, for the greater good. That's right. I mean, we got differences of opinion. You do your thing, I do mine. I don't right. like what you do. You don't like what I do. I get right. that. But for the greater good, to help these kids. That's right. Because if they really knew how bad it was. It's they'd horrible. Be like, they'd be like, do whatever you can to help, right? So that's that's the purpose. So I'm glad you did that, man. I'm in. Come on, join me with me. Man, that. absolutely. Absolutely, man. Yeah. I love to do everything. And I know a lot of people, man, you know, because we talked a lot about success. And when we talk about success as far as, you know, with, with, with monetary gain and the other success of the world, a lot of people want to know, man, when Tyler, why Tyler ain't tied to that? When Tyler gonna get with a nice, you know, uh, someone listen, that they can share I, share all this shit with? I have someone who's wonderful, and she's getting her share of all of it. And but, but and, and but it's silent. 
But yeah, absolutely. I mean, even <laughs> even my even my son, man, like being in the public, it's just I I want him to know who he is before right. people start to. And, and she and I are really good about that. Just making sure he at five years old, he's protected, he's clear about who he is before people start telling him who he is. Makes so, all the sense in I'm, the world. I, I'm I'm good with that. No, that ain't that ain't. I'll tell you off. off yeah, all right, we're cool. Yeah, Moving yeah, right yeah, along. Yeah, Moving right along. Yeah. You have some of the greatest parties. Mm. Like I've been, you know what I'm saying? Now I ain't even just talking about the one last year yeah. uh, that you invited me to. I'm talking about, uh, like, I remember the Tuskegee Airmen yeah, party. That's my house there, yeah. And a lot of people, at your personal house, which yeah. you are a brave man to do, I would never invite all these motherfuckers in my house. I was trying to help them, man. I was trying to help them, <laughs> I was, I was to help them pro- sell that movie. So I was like, yeah, come on in here, do what we can do. And I so. found out that you have, like, a, a, a model plane collection. Yes. You fly model planes. RC planes, yes. RC planes. So how does one get into modeling planes? You know what it is for me, man? Only God would give me a hobby where I'm looking up to the skies. (laughs) And and, and here's the problem with having a little bit of money. I was was buying them on the road. I buy them. Oh, I like this. I buy them. And I got home, and I I had – I was moving at the time, so they were all over the place. Right. We got them in one room, and I had hundreds of them. I was like, Damn. So, but but no, it's 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 it relaxes me. I go out there with my son, and we'll be flying planes around the sky. It's it's, it's a really cool man. Hobby. I walked around your house, man. You know what I'm saying? I got I past, sold that house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you did sell that yeah. house, man, yeah. for uh, and, and quite the markup, I'm sure. It no, was, wasn't the markup. What you lost? Big loss. But Damn. that's that's Georgia. That's Georgia. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I say I never you never pay over two point five for a house in Atlanta. Yeah. That's what I said. Then you're in, you're in good shape. Never pay over two point five for a house. I didn't take my own advice, so you know I'm you, up under I'm up under two. But guess what? You don't want to see what I did in Douglasville, then. Man. What? Mm-hmm. But did you build from the ground? No. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, if you built you built from the ground, you got equity already in you. Mm-hmm. No. You spent your equity. You spent your equity on your upgrade, man, man. <laughs> but but you know what? I the reason I built it the way that I built it is because no black person has left a legacy home. And when I'm gone, it, it, the property is 1,200 acres, and it backs up to a, a park. So mm. I want the park to be a part of it, and I want the house itself to stay in my estate for my son. Right. And so people can visit it, and it'd be something like, uh, you know, you know, just something that people want to see over over a hundred years from now. So. Man, I appreciate all that you've done. I'm gonna say it again, and uh, and I had Will Packer uh, sitting sitting with me, and and you know, and I I will offer you the same question I offered him. Mm-hmm. Why in the hell has it taken us so long to find the right role for me? <laughs> in one year? I mean, I, show, I I watch your films, and all I do is I look at different characters. Yeah, I could have been that motherfucker. No, I man, you know what I do, you know. I I'll be like, so, uh, honestly, I, sometimes I get intimidated. I think like, ah, I'm not gonna call. They don't. They ain't not gonna want to do this. Like, yeah. Now that I know. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you know what I'm okay. saying? Because hey, guess what? We all are businessmen, and yep. whatever cannot be given on the front end, yep. we can receive on the back end. Yep. I don't mind sharing in the growth. Yeah, no, I, I get that, but but my folks are taken care of. Your folks are taken care yeah, of. Yeah, my folks are taken care of. Now, yeah. you know, a lot of people have said, now, it's fa- about to fall from great movies. Yeah. Now, I saw yeah. Black Twitter tell your ass up uh-huh. about the headdressings, uh-huh. about the, 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 the wigs, wigs yeah. and shit. Yeah. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? One person <laughs> said, uh, one person <laughs> said, <laughs> Go ahead. What did they say, T? They say, man, I saw the girl get in the shower and the, and the water hit it and the wig didn't move. They said the wig <laughs> didn't get wet when she Listen, got in the shower. Let me tell you something about that. That person with me, by the way. So, I ain't going to tell, no so, tell you no lie. I ain't going to do you like that. Some of it, man, <laughs> some of it is hilarious to me. Let me tell you something. About, about but all that matters is the money at the end. No, of no, day. let me tell you about my hair department, man. Those, those, they, those, those ladies and guys, they make $65 an hour. They work mm. 10 to 12 hours a day, right? So a lot of them are uh, new. And trying to get it together right. and learning, right? And I'm okay with that. That's you know, right. I'm okay with them trying to find their way. Yeah, you know, they're going to make some mistakes. So, so I, for them, I felt the pressure. Not for myself. I don't really. Give a, but for them, but but I tell you what, it did. What's everything that? they're doing now is so much better. Mm. So it's okay. It's all right. Just watch. Just wait on the next eleven movies. And that's see exactly how, right. See how but but but, if you, but but listen. You got Crystal Fox, Tika Sumter. Um, I'm not Tika, Tika Sumter. That's happening now. Crystal Fox, Brisha Webb, yes. uh, uh, Cicely Tyson, yes. Felicia Rashad, Makad Brooks. They outacted all that damn, Again, all that damn up. hair, man. Felicia Come on. Rashad yeah. in that movie yeah. is the way that we've never seen yeah. her before. Yeah. And I, in the history mm-hmm. uh, uh, of of this generation, yeah, I ain't she, never seen her like that yeah, before. Yeah, she's amazing. Man. If anybody haven't seen uh, Fall from Grace, you know what I'm saying, put it in your on your to-do list to go check it out. And also, on man, Netflix, you, yeah. 
Oh, oh, absolutely on Netflix uh, in the trending section. Yeah, yeah you know yeah. what I mean. Been doing that for a while. That's you know good. what I mean. Uh, I understand you also have a new show coming out on BET called Ruthless. Actually, BET Plus. So I'm a part owner in BET Plus, our streaming service, and we're we're doing. We're real... not gonna glaze by that now. We're not gonna no, just no. break. We're now we're not gonna breeze by that. Now you say you part owner yeah. of BET Plus. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, now BET Plus is the streaming platform For extension BET. of BET. Yes, uh, which is which would mean uh, the so you about to say something crazy. The <laughs> Netflix version yes. of BET. Yes, you are part owner in. Yes. It. Okay. Yes. Come on, man. Now right, let's get to the rest of it. I just didn't want to get that by there. Yeah. Uh, oh. Yeah. Yeah. Wait. But 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 listen. <laughs> <laughs> so come on, man. So, Talk that. We need to hear this. Tyler. So so yeah. So it, it, BT Plus is a streaming service. We're we're doing well ahead of what we thought we'd be doing this mm. time. So I'm very very happy about it. And this is Ruthless is the first show that's going to be launched on it. The Oval. It's on BET now and, and doing so well. There's a moment in there where this woman from a cult takes a baby. Uh. Well, this show is the cult where she took the baby. Ah. So if you're watching the Oval on BET, go to BET Plus and see yeah. where the baby is. And that show is crazy. Direct the reference. Like yeah. you write from the perspective of, I want people to go from watching this show, gaining interest to go to this show. Exactly right. That shit is brilliant. <laughs> so, so, to go from a kid in New Orleans, yeah. you know what I'm saying, figuring out how to get into the theater at intermission yeah, yeah, yeah. to developing uh, uh, a long game scheme, plot, plan, and or strategy yeah. to get you here to where you have so many multifaceted uh, ideas yeah. and layers to how you execute these ideas. Yeah. Man, how can you manage all of that you know, meticulously without, you know, anything falling through the cracks. I got a great team, man. And I only work eight months a year. I take a lot of time off. I take from, <laughs> from, from my son's birthday all the way through the holidays. I take off in the summer. I take a couple of months off. But I got a great team that helps me hold it up, you know. Man, but shout I, out to them. Yeah, man. Yeah. And and run by a black woman and, you know, runs my company and mostly black people. What's around her name? Me. Michelle. Michelle Sneed. Michelle Sneed, yeah. man. Shout out to Michelle yeah. Sneed and yeah. the rest of the team at Tyler Pier yeah. Studio. Videos, man, you guys are doing a phenomenal job. And next time a script comes in, you please remind no, I got him you. what he said. You I know, got you, man. You know what I mean? I got uh, you. Again, Speaking, I want to keep talking about you. New Orleans. I want to just mention this. Please Cause, mention cause, it. Because um, Master P, uh -huh. I saw something. He was blasting me because he was like, you know, he would. He, we from New Orleans. I thought he would embrace me. As I, I, P I, been on the show before. Yeah. So this 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 surprised me, right? So I, I, I got to uh, New Orleans to do the Essence Festival. It was crazy because I just landed and they were rushing me in. I'm sitting. I'm moving all around. Uh -huh. there, there was chaotic backstage. Okay. They got Buddha Judge coming this way. Got this one coming this way. And I'm trying to get through. And I and and I see him, and I I, I, I hug him, say hi. And, and you know, I, I, they kept me moving. I right. wasn't trying to, like, shade it. Come on, man. I, I wouldn't do anything like that. So right. I don't know I don't know how his perception became that in that, in that we way. We can handle that. We can yeah, handle that yeah. right now, man, because yeah. P is a, 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 fan, yep. a, a friend yep. of Expeditiously. And I'm a fan of his. I'm a huge fan of him and, and his family. I'm so, a fan yeah. of P. I'm yeah. a fan of his. Just like I admire your yeah. acumen yeah. coming from where you, are, where you were to where you are. He down the street I, from me. Dude. I have so, an yeah. equal amount of, of appreciation yeah. for his journey yeah, exactly and right. what he's done Absolutely. for us and where he's led the generation. Absolutely, man. Never should anyone, you know, uh, uh, discredit the work and and sacrifices yeah. of people who open doors for the rest of us to come through exactly right. and benefit from them. Yeah. I don't see you as that kind of guy. I definitely don't see P as that kind he of ain't. guy. I'm not that I'm kind not. of guy. Right. So, therefore... Ain't no reason why we can't come to the table, sit down, and gain a high level of understanding. I don't, you know, I don't even think it's that serious as much as it is. I wanted him to understand it because he made it public. I wanted him to understand it publicly. It ain't that, that deep. It ain't no shade, man. Okay, I was, cool. I, I never, I would never disrespect him because I, I honor what he's done, and and just both of us come from New Orleans and grind it. Right. And that was just a crazy caught up day for me. Well, you know what, man? I think that that must be accepted, received, and respected. Yeah, you well, dig what I'm saying? Got it. Uh, and again, man, if anybody's in Atlanta. Man, at least get a chance to ride up Lee yeah. Street and check out the Tyler Perry Studio. Yeah. Once a Confederate army base, army base yeah. for the tactics and strategies to 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 fight the Union to keep us enslaved. Yep. You know, I mean? you know what I mean? So it goes from this place was used to fight for slavery to now. Yeah, we got Tyler Perry in here 
employing black people yeah. in the middle of the hood. The same land. Yep. The same exact yep. land, man. Yep. Thank you. I can't I, I can't say it enough. Now, we have a tradition here oh. <clears throat> at Expeditiously. This tradition is the word of the week. Hmm. Now, the word of the week is a word that I use. I, I usually pick it from the conversation or something that I take from the guest. Hmm. Uh, and the word that I chose for you today oh lord is oligarch mm. yes mm. oligarch now an oligarch is a very rich business leader with a great deal of political influence mm. now what i will do is i use it in a sentence mm. so the people who listen can go back to school work or home and use it oligarch. giving us no credit at all that's like right, that's right. the word all that's, that's right that's right okay tyler perry Savily navigated himself through the tyrants and oligarchs of Hollywood to become a highly esteemed producer. Perfect. Now, I can't again, man. The generation needs to get past all of, you know, because media is controlled by people who want to direct the thoughts and opinions sure. of the mass public for sure you know yeah. to or away from someone right we have to get back to being our own thinkers having right. control of our own mind developing our own opinion based off of facts that we've researched right and things that we know from experience that's truth you know yep. so we need to get away from the the unwarranted criticism mm. and get to appreciate the 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 man uh, in business and and personally that Tyler Perry has become and the man that has made sacrifices for the generation and the culture and the community for us to have opportunities to move ourselves forward. I so I would say it to you straight up. I appreciate you. Thank you appreciate Love you. and respect. Uh, you will always have a seat at my table, whatever table, if it's big enough for you. <laughs> you did what I'm saying? And thank you again for Thanks, joining bro. us I here. It. My this pleasure. has been Expeditious. For you, man. Thank you. Watch your favorite episodes of Expeditiously right now on the Expeditiously YouTube page.